welcome to our spoilers review of the greatest zombie movie ever. Um, so I saw this on NetGalley and I read the summary and I was like, oh, that sounds really cute. I think we could really relate to this. I mean, in high school we tried to put together some feature films. Well, not feature films, like short films. And, you know, we had a lot of fun and I think for what they were, they turned out really well. It's, it's cool to go back definitely to like look at the scripts because I think there's a lot there that now could, we could do some really cool things with. <laughs> Back then, I don't know if we had the resources or the know-how. We just had fun. It was like, we all got to hang out. We just made these movies and they, like we choreographed stuff. We wrote scripts. It didn't go horribly, horribly wrong. No, and I think the best part was definitely because I was taking that class. And so at the end of the year, I took the class twice because crazy. At the end of the year, you got to put together, they did a big film like festival. festival. And so, like, we all got to go to this film festival and we all went to different schools. So, everybody skipped class and we got to, like, watch our movie on this big screen with other people who, like, weren't our friends. <laughs> <laughs> and so, that was, like, such a big deal because you felt so cool and, like, and I got to go up and introduce it and, like. Also, kind of embarrassed because you're like, Oh, oh, I did that. Yeah, it was it was fun and it was a good experience. And I was talking to the teacher, and he still shows the Go Ask Alice in like oh adaptation we did as like an example of the project. Oh, that's so <laughs> I was great. like, that was nine years ago. <laughs> Anyways, I will be linking all of these in the description below so you can share in our kind of like pride and embarrassment. <laughs> yeah, go, go have a good laugh. This book is about three friends who want to make the greatest zombie movie ever. Surprise. Obviously it's not gonna work. They've only ever made films where they just have people show up and kind of like make up lines so they've never had a plot, never had to work with a script, never even really worked with like a set of actors before and they decided they want to make the greatest zombie movie ever. Destined to fail from the moment this idea came up. And they give themselves the shortest timeline you could possibly think of, three weeks because then summer vacation hits and one of their friends is going away for the summer. No, dude, dude, what you do is you start planning now and then you just email back and forth through the summer and then you're gonna have a good solid base and then you film it. <laughs> like, I, I, this is what blows my mind. It's like, why write this second? Like, mm -hmm. like no, nothing is gonna be epic right this second. It's not like his friend is moving to another town. Yeah. He's just going away for the summer. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Justin to fail. Um, there's Justin, Bobby, Gabe. Gabe is very practical. Um, he's the one who's like, guys, we can't have 70 helicopter crashes in this movie because CGI doesn't work like that and also we can't CGI crap. CGI is hard. <laughs> for reference, way back when, when I set my hand on fire in our Hollow City review for like those six seconds of flame that took me four hours. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, there, there's one quote that I really did like, though, and I think it was the uncle who said it. He was like, oh, yes, you want CGI in your movie. CGI crap is very cheap. CGI, good CGI costs a lot of fucking money. Mm -hmm. So true. And you know what? That'll probably stick with me for the rest of my life. Nothing else in this book really well. Lots of things go wrong. Justin breaks his arm, acting like an idiot. Um, yeah, that scene pissed me off because he's just like running through the streets screaming his friend's name and I'm like, this doesn't, this isn't logical. <laughs> it wasn't really logical in the book either. No, it's just, people are like, what were you doing? You're, you're, you're acting like an idiot. Mm -hmm. What else happened is they dropped their camera. That was like rough for me to read because <laughs> like we film on my camera and there have been times where the tripod has almost fallen over and like my heart stopped. <laughs> I remember the one time we were filming that one thing and my brother wrecked the camera yeah. and we actually had to keep the shutters open with scotch tape. <laughs> I remember that. That oh, was ghetto. That was so <laughs> awful. Their main actress insists on getting her eyebrow pierced, it gets infected. Then their friend, who's the sound guy, gets sick, and then he drops the cam the, the microphone mic. on her eyebrow. They don't get to film in the school, which probably wasn't actually necessary, but they break in and they end up getting caught, and that's when their film project kind of gets shut down. So yeah, just things go wrong, and that's pretty much the entire book. A lot of these things could have been avoided, and that's my problem. Yeah. Because they were dealing with problems that 
you know, they actually stopped and thought about it. The script thing drove me crazy because <laughs> it's like, we have to write the script tonight. And then they first, they divvied it up, divvied it up. And so they each wrote a third and it's just like, oh, we're gonna like, gonna like do this right now and we're gonna do it. And like, that's not how writing works. Yeah. Drafting <laughs> outlines. <laughs> you can't just like sit there all night and have each of you write like- A chunk. And, and then have it co like- No. 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 This book takes place in a timeline where Google Docs is clearly a thing. Why weren't you all in one Google Doc? Why? <laughs> Writing in different colors. Uh, there's other weird things like, okay, so Justin decides that they need a budget, um, especially for the zombie prosthetics, so they give most of their budget to Bobby's Uncle Clyde, who we'll get to, but he goes and gets this money from his grandmother. And you're thinking, oh, lovely grandmother, no, this grandmother's like, hey, hey, you're gonna give me 12% interest. I'm like, these kids don't even know what fucking interest is, okay? And they the fact no that idea. she hires someone to scare him when he's in the hospital. Yes, which is so weird. And it's never referred to. Yeah, it's out of left field. Like, he could have actually... It? Yeah, he could have been on painkillers and hallucinated this. It was, it was strange and should have been edited out. I didn't like any of the adults in this book. Like the mom was fine. Yeah, the mom like the parents were okay because they they come they came off as being like the voice of reason. And even them being like, no, um, you're gonna stay in the house today and sleep because you know you broke your arm. And he's like raging against them. You're like the villains in my story. And I'm just like Wait, no. kid, kid, they told you that yes, just one day. We understand this is important to you. It's just one day. Like, you broke your fucking arm, kid. <laughs> Sit down. And just like all the other adults are like weird, though. They're like talking about like, oh, you know, you watch too many horror movies. Like, are you in a cult? You should spend more time thinking about like none of the adults. You should make a film about cats. What? And like the uncle was creepy and like some of his jokes were just dragged out too long. Like they show up to like see the zombie prosthetics and first there's like an empty room. And then he brings out a box with one mask. And he's just like, oh, you know, you couldn't afford this. You couldn't afford this. Oh, surprise, I actually did all of it. It's upstairs. Ha ha ha, this is so funny. And I'm just like, no, it's not. This joke could have been like a paragraph instead of yeah. two pages. All the characters, they just kind of like blended together. Yeah. Like really blended together. Like you've got Alicia, who's like, you know, Justin's crush, but he doesn't spend any time thinking about her, really. Like you don't know any details about her at all. Like you don't know her interests, her hobbies, um, like any weird quirks that she has. She's just kind of this hot crush that he has that shows up. All the three boys basically blend together. They've got like one defining characteristic and after that they all just sound the same. I think that this story could work as a movie mm -hmm. just because a lot of things that you lose in the text would be able to be demonstrated visually yeah. So you'd see who was speaking and who was saying which line. And I think, like, it could be, like, one of, like, those family channel, you know, Saturday movies that yeah. you just kind of watch and it's fun and it's not too serious. Yeah, either that or, like, he needed to commit to a weird and quirky sense of humor. I feel like he was going for, like, a PG rating on in somewhere that doesn't even have, like, a rating scale. You know what I mean? Like, if Jesse Andrews had written this, there would have been a couple of dick jokes in there and it would have made it all better. Which is the weirdest sentence I think I've ever said in my life. You know, I feel like if somebody like Jesse Andrews had written this, this would have been an amazing thing. It's like there's, it's candy, you know? It's yeah. like, it's not, there's not much to it, you know? Yeah, it's, it's very short. But you know, if I was a kid, if I was like nine or 10, I would have loved this. Yeah. Just because like as a kid, you know, wanting to make movies and like, here's this kid who does it, you know, he's making a movie with his friends and ha ha, all the wacky shenanigans that are totally lost on me now. You have to not know better. Yeah. You have to have that like going into it with a sense of innocence. Yeah. So like, that's why I'm saying it's as, like, as far as all the research I've done is concerned, it's directed at a YA audience and it should not be. It should be like nine to 12. Some things you're just, you, you read them and you're like, who wrote this? Especially like there's this one scene where they're filming in this park and this family with a birthday party comes in and the family decides that they kind of don't like the kids filming. So they decide to disrupt their filming by sending this clown, Stinky the Clown, to run through all their shots. And he yells the stupidest lines. 
I don't like any of the adult adults in this book. <laughs> like just the dumbest lines. Like oh, oh I'm the turtle named Barf. I can eat three hundred pistachios in a weekend. Her her her. The, do- the dentist says I don't floss enough. What what? And they're only funny if you try to read them out loud very <laughs> seriously, which I did. <laughs> which we nearly killed ourselves, but. Reading them as like part of the book, you're like, why does reading this... them out loud in front of the camera makes you question a few things about yourself <laughs> and your dignity and your dignity. I mean, the darkest line of the book is when the pa- they pay off the parents to send the clan away, and they the mother's like, "Stinky, go back to your cage." And I was just like, "Whoa, what kind of clown are you?" And okay, so the way the the best part of this book is actually the epilogue, mm-hmm. and um, so throughout this whole thing, you've got this one kid who they call Spork. I related this, to him. This is what we're dealing with, though, a kid named Spork. I related to him. And he's just, he's like, oh, he's the younger brother of the leading male actor, and he's like, oh, can I, can I film you guys? And they're like, sure, why not? Behind the scenes footage, no problem, go for it, go nuts. And so the kids end up breaking into the school and getting caught, and so their movie gets shut down. And they end up, like, scaring the crap out of their principal. At the end, you know, it's like, oh, look. And they finally were able to put together the footage for the greatest zombie movie ever. And it was terrible. (laughs) And then it's, like, second epilogue. And it's like, oh, we're at this movie festival. And we're talking with Spork, whatever the kid's real name is. And uh, this is his uh, documentary on something like how not to make a movie. And it's just showing them and all the things that go wrong and they end up making a bunch of money off of this instead, right? And then you find out that, you know, life has gotten better for ex-con Uncle Clyde and, you know. And now they're making the zombie movie. And they're actually doing it right because they know Mm -hmm. what not to do. So in a way, that was probably the best part of slogging through (laughs) the whole book was just... The clever wrap-up at the end. Throughout this entire movie, I kept having flashbacks to a very similar story, but which one which is done much better, which is Super 8. Yeah, I can see that. The J.J. Abrams movie, where the focus of the movie is a group of kids who are trying to make the sci-fi movie, and then a sci-fi movie kind of happens around them. Mm. And just, it can be done. Yeah, like, <laughs> telling this story can be done, It can and it can be done well. I feel like the story's been told before. Mm-hmm. Super 8 was a very cute movie, yeah. and I hate that people forgot about it. Yeah. Anyways, this has been our review of the greatest zombie movie ever. But yeah, so if you've got like 9 to 12 nieces, nephews, brothers, sisters. Who like movies and making movies. Yeah, this would be the book that I'd hand them. Mm-hmm. They'd probably have a lot of fun with Stinky mm-hmm. Clan. So, see you later, guys.